Hey everybody, uh, it's Mac here. Welcome back to another new video. Uh, today I wanted to talk about how I solved a sort of weird issue that uh, I have been having recently uh, relating to my uh, YouTube channel. I've been making YouTube channels for several, several years now. I think since 2012. Certainly since before I ever had any kind of job. Before I was 18, when I was still in high school. Maybe even before I was in high school. I don't totally remember exactly when I made the first video on this channel. And over the years... One thing that I have found myself quite focused on, you'll just have to excuse the cars driving by the highway right next to my house, there's really not much I can do about it at this point, but one of the things that I've become very focused on during the time that I've been making videos is sort of the branding that goes along with that. Uh, uh, I've put a lot of time into making thumbnails and things, and certainly more recently that's I've, I've developed kind of a clear style that sort of just works for the channel. There's, you know, when I go to make a thumbnail, I know kind of what I'm looking for and it doesn't take me too long to get something together. You know, I'll still make six or seven thumbnails for every video sometimes, but, you know, I, I sort of know what I'm headed for and that helps. But um, one thing that I was very uncertain about for a very long time was the little intro that I have in front of a lot of my videos. Now I have a lot of videos, uh, a little bit over a hundred, not that many, not, you know, compared to some other things, but almost every single one of these videos has some sort of a motion graphics-y intro in it. You know, this was a very simple one, kind of the uh, ep epilepsy inducing one. Didn't stick with that one for too long, but there, there's several of these. I could go back through and show you a bunch of them. Basically the issue that I was having is that I was never super happy with one of these intros, and any one of them would have been totally fine, I think. But I, I got to a point literally where I was wanting to make a different intro for every single video, and that was getting in the way of actually making videos. So basically a while back I decided to try to make something a bit more, um, we'll say modular if you will. Uh, you know, let's take a look at this video, and then let's take a look at my most recent video. In front of both of these videos, there is a sort of an intro, a nice little motion graphics design. You can see this one here. Uh, now, they're very, very similar if you look at the two. I think that much is obvious. But it's, again, I, th I think I already used the word, but it's sort of modular. I can change up basically anything in this design, but still keep a design. A consistent design. So if you look at the two, one is certainly newer, a bit more streamlined, one is a bit more of an older style, a bit different, sort of the elements around the outside have changed, the actual font faces and text has changed, and certainly the actual sort of logo crest type thing has changed. Um, now obviously I tend to prefer this newer one, because I mean that's the most recent version that I've done, but what I like about this intro is that I still have the freedom to change it whenever I want to. If I wanted to make a different intro for every video, I can still do that. I can go into an After Effects project, tweak a few things, make some minor adjustments, and render something out, and I've got a different intro for every single video, if that's something I want to do. But I'm no longer spending several hours like conceptualizing something new or trying to come up with something new and fresh and interesting. I just sort of go back into something that's reliable and true. I still get the satisfaction of being able to change things up whenever I want, but I also get a sort of aesthetic consistency and more importantly, time added back into my pocket to actually work on things that people do care about. Not very many people are going to care about the little seven second intro in front of a video if the video itself sucks because you spent all the time working on the intro. So uh, let's take a look at making that happen. First thing to mention, there are several, several assets for this project. Um, most of them are various little images and things that frankly don't even really make all that much sense to anyone <laughs> other than me. Uh, a few of them are references to something to do with the channel. You know, for example, a lot of my first videos were about After Effects. This is the first time I made a video involving After Effects in quite a while. You know, I had a few videos about uh, IMDB that sort of blew up kind of early on on the channel. So. You know, there's one of those logos in there, a couple other things. This is just a screenshot of some CSS from my personal website. I don't even totally understand why that's there. Here's some random math. I made a couple of videos about it. You know, it's not really important. The actual elements are really only make sense to me. I like them being there because they add like a sense of clutter to the design, which I like. I like the idea of clutter. It makes things feel sort of lived in and not so fresh and clean. And cl I mean, I like things looking clean and crisp and everything, but this is like the lime in a vodka soda. You know, the vodka soda on its own, it's just vodka and club soda. It just tastes like carbonated water with some ethanol. But you add a bit of lime in there and all of a sudden it's a bit more crowded, but it's alive. That's a terrible analogy, but whatever. The only really important thing here 
that I wanted to mention. I've got a few film grainy textures. Uh, I'm not sure what the licensing issue is with these. So I, I've, in the past, I've like given out some textures, and it turns out whatever website I got them from was not happy that I did, or like the website that I bought them from, or got them from, or downloaded them from. Like, turns out it gotten the images from somewhere else. So kind of giving away images that you didn't take yourself is a bit of a issue. So I'm not going to give away any specific images. I'm not going to make a download available or anything. But rest assured that if you just Google like film grain texture bump up the search settings to 4k you'll find some good stuff uh, and then the other thing here that's sort of interesting is we have some chromatic aberration type deals uh, this is really just some lens flares some lights flashing in front of some film lenses and a uh, nice transitional type of effects you know they are kind of important for the design so let's stop yapping and get into actually making the intro uh, so let's go ahead and open up After Effects. This is sort of the my motion graphics software of choice. Has been for a really, really long time. I've yet to find anything that really rivals that for me. Um, there's good stuff out there. There's um, Apple has one called Motion. Um, Hit Film has some good stuff. There's Fusion, which I think is now just part of DaVinci Resolve. And then there's Nuke, but I don't know how like good. Both of those options have either a free option or like a uh, educational somewhat type of license just for non-commercial use. I don't know how good a node-based editor is for uh, motion graphics, but I'm just dragging in these assets. Now, uh, the original intro, and I do recommend you do this even if you're only uploading it 1080 or whatever else, is uh, was designed at 4K. And the reason I recommend that is because even if you're uploading it 1080 now, you might upload it 4K later. But 4K you can downscale, 1080 you don't really want to upscale. So that's what I did originally. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is design actually all the way down at 720p. Uh, reason for that is because I'm filming this on a, recording this on a laptop, and I'm trying to keep the fan noise down. You probably already heard some fan noise in the microphone. I'm trying to do the best I can there, but, uh, you know, we do what we can. And we'll call this intro, or we'll just call this uh, render. And we're going to make it seven seconds long, and we'll do, uh, I'll just try to work at 24 frames a second. That's like the film frame per second, and I basically just do it for consistency. If I had started doing things off at 30, I would do everything at 30 now. Not a big fan it's of 60 frames a second. I know that's a somewhat controversial thing going on right now, but I am definitely in the film frame rate category of thinking, if you will. Okay, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is create a bit of a background that we can overlay everything on top of. So let's create a new comp. Be, we'll make it slightly larger than this one so that we have some room to zoom and scale in and things. And uh, you know, it doesn't need to be that much larger. We could probably almost just do like 1080 would probably be fine. We'll do about that. And we'll call this comp uh, background. And let's go ahead and grab a few of these film effects here. Uh, whoop, that should be on that one. That's what we want. So let's right click and we'll do transform fit the comp width. Okay. Do do do. Drag that over until we get some actual effects in here. We want to start off with some color. Maybe we'll just make a copy of this. We'll change these both to add. And let's see, we can rotate this one maybe 180 degrees, shove it down over here, and that should look fine. Wow, you can hear the fans ramping up now. Let's make sure we're at auto resolution here. Oh, it's gonna be full anyways, doesn't really matter. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and save this somewhere. It's a good idea to save pretty regularly when you're working on these kind of projects. Uh, Adobe software, I don't know why I do like it, but Premiere and After Effects especially have a tendency to crash sometimes, and I, I really can't explain why. Uh, it's not just Mac OS either. I've used them on Windows as well, and it's it's just they crash. <laughs> I don't know how to explain why. Uh, so we'll create a new uh, adjustment layer here. Uh, Command Y is a shortcut to do that. You can also just go up to Layer and New uh, Adjustment Layer. And what this should let us do is grab some effects here. I'm gonna do uh, a tent and a curves. And we'll intend this to be a sort of a bluish color, something like that. Add a little blue in the darkness too. Not too much. Okay. And let's see what we're doing here. Let's get kind of a good frame to work with. 
Okay, and let's play with this curve a bit. I want this to be quite sharp. I'm also looking for more of like a sky blue. We might drag this down a bit more to this direction. I'm sure the colors are going to end up being slightly different than they are in the original. That's kind of the fun of playing with something like this though, these sort of real lighting effects, is that when you're just adjusting color, it's very difficult to get back to an exact precise color. Really the only way that I've found to reliably do that is to just write down the exact values that you put into tint and, and the various effects to make sure that you can replicate it. But the fun is not replicating it and sort of seeing what you can come up with. Okay, and then one other thing I'll do is I'll create a new solid, I'll call this gradient. I'm gonna drop this in the background, let's solo this for a sec, and we want an effect called ramp. Let's see here, let's do a radial ramp. Let's uh, swap this, then we'll rotate it 180 degrees. I'm just hitting R to bring up the rotation. T brings up opacity, S brings up scale. There's a couple other handy things you can do with that. Let's see here. Let's give it a bit of a bluish color like that. Nothing too wild or wacky here. Well, there to be a little bit of something. Yeah, we'll just grab that and then darken it quite a bit. Um, okay, then what we could do is we'll hit T to bring up the opacity. And if we hold down Alt or Option on Mac, hit this little stopwatch here, it will allow us to type in an expression. We're gonna do a very, very simple expression. It's gonna be wiggle. Uh, and we'll do, I think it's 0.5 times a second. You can adjust 15% of the opacity, I believe is the order it goes in. Let's take a look at what that does. Okay, let's try to up these a bit. Do 15 and 15. 15 times a second is adjusting 15% adjusting of opacity. Okay, that's a bit much. Let's do five times a second. That's probably fine. And then when we drop all the other elements on top of it, it just makes sure that in sort of these darker parts, there's still a little bit of something going on in the background, which is nice. Okay, cool, so that's a pretty good background. Now, one of the things I definitely did in the original was I created a couple of uh, white solids here, and we'll make the height one pixel. Change the blending mode to add, and we'll maybe like make a copy of it and rotate it 90 degrees. We have a sort of like a grid across the screen. Um, we actually probably want to lower the opacity quite a bit, uh, maybe like 60 for both of these. That's probably fine. Uh, one other thing I did in the original was I created a sort of a dot grid, but I ended up not really liking that. So we're gonna ditch that. And then we can drag this background comp into the main comp. And what we can do is I'll give it slight rotation, maybe. And we'll hit shift, we can hit S. That'll bring up the scale and the rotation. Let's start it off quite small. And if we rotate it less, we can get it even smaller. Okay. And we'll hit the stopwatch on both of those, come to the end, and we can rotate it quite a bit, scale it up. Okay, that's something, but I think we've got just too much rotation at the end there. Maybe slightly less would be good. Okay, yeah, I like that. Very nice. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and create sort of the main clock grid type effect here. Uh, you can see we have a sort of a clock that goes around the entire logo here, and then the actual logo, and that's sort of the main sort of focal point of the design here. So let's work on that. We'll create a, a new composition. Well, I don't even know how that opened up. So we'll do a composition, new comp, call this a clock. We'll do one for the clock and then one for the crest or, you know, the logo. And we'll call that a crest. Oh, and these should actually be 720p, by the way. I think I might have made those with the wrong resolution there. Bump those back down to 720. Okay, cool. Uh, so the crest element is quite simple. Uh, if I look over here in my effects or in my uh, thumbnail images, I should have a file in .eps, and this is my logo as it appears basically everywhere. And so what I'll do is I'll just bring up the align window, make sure that's right there in the center, click off of everything, grab the pen tool, and we can just draw around this. So let's see, we'll create that and that that and that and that and i'm creating shape layers in after effects just because you have a bit more control over them when you do it this way and let's see here we want the fill to be at about 10 percent of normal or maybe 20 percent of normal something like that and then we'll set the stroke width here to just one and if we turn back on the background yeah that looks good that looks fine 
Okay, and then it should remember those settings if we go ahead and just trace around the rest of the shape here. And then we can just delete that logo from the comp. And the final test here is if we go back over to the render comp, drop in this crest logo, we can see how it interacts with the scene. Uh, I'm gonna change the blending mode to add. And yeah, I like that. But one thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make this fill color white rather than black. Let's see how that affects it. Okay, that's good. But then what I'll wanna do probably is set the opacity back down to like 10 or something if we're gonna do a white background. Um, you know, maybe we could even go slower than that. Let's try five. Is that too low? Hard to tell. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that for now. So then next up, we need to create the cre the clock. And at some point we will end up layer, pre-compose, dropping these into their own comp so that we can scale them together. So we'll call it crest uh, clock. We'll go ahead and get that out of the way. And they'll both be set to add. And again, the reason for that is so that we can sort of control them both independently and as a unit. So uh, let's go ahead and hop over to the clock comp. And let's see here. Let's create some text. And we'll start off with just, uh, we'll start at 2011 and we'll do 2012. Um, really what we want here is we're going to, let's get the tracking back down to normal and let's use a, easy font we'll do like fear code or something like that and we want to we'll align this to the center first and then we'll we're going to grab a elliptical tool and let's turn this on here so we can see what we're doing make sure we're right in the center and we'll start to draw a circle on the actual text layer itself and i can't tell if we're even close to the center there uh we appear to be close on i am off a bit Get that right in the center as best we can. And then what we want to do is come down to the text settings, we'll go to path options and choose that mask. And then this, as we type, we'll go around the mask. So let's scale this down quite a bit and continue typing. 2013, 14. And then at the end, we can just adjust the scaling until we get the spacing about right. And I'm just doing this by eye. It's, it's, it's not really, I mean, you could do the math and get it perfect if you really wanted to. That's not something I'm super concerned with. You know, I like there to be some imperfections. Lime in the vodka soda, if you will. Apparently that terrible analogy is gonna stick around. Okay, cool. And that's the first sort of element of the clock. And we'll just literally make a couple of copies of it and we'll scale the first one down and then we'll scale down one more. And we're gonna change the text inside of these, but for right now, what I wanna do is add a bit of uh, rotation. So actually, let me delete the closest inner ring first. And what we'll do is we'll do a rotation value here. Well, that ain't it. We'll need to grab the uh, the pan behind anchor point tool. It changes the anchor point of the image. And all we need to do is just drag the anchor point dead center. And I didn't realize it wasn't centered up, so we'll delete that copy, make another copy of it, scale it down. Now the center point should be center, and if we try to rotate, much better. And I mean, maybe if you want to have it rotate off kilter a little bit, drag the anchor point a bit off center to each their own. So for our purposes, we will pick what or uh, click the keyframe button here, and we'll have it rotate, we'll say maybe 30 degrees. And we'll just hit the spacebar to play that back. Um, you know, it honestly could almost be a tiny bit faster, but, uh, you know, we'll try like 35. I probably wouldn't go higher than about 40, but that's, you know, my personal preference. Okay, that's good. And then we'll make a copy of this and scale it down. That will be the inner most sort of clock element. And then with this middle element here, we will have it uh, rotate the opposite direction. So if we did 35 there, we'll do negative 35 here and if we take a look now okay that's cool that's cool let's just change up the text a bit on each of these okay so that looks pretty good to my eye we might uh let's see we'll scale down the actual crest a bit and then really what we need to do is mess with the clock um actually let's go into the clock and play around with the scaling okay that's a bit more like it i think the text was a bit smaller in the original but you know i'm okay with this for now i do want to jack with the background a bit these two lines here are very very predominant whoop bump the mic there hope that didn't sound awful we'll lower the opacity of both of these lines here set them to maybe 30 maybe even lower maybe like 10 give that a look that's more like it we don't really need to see them we just need to know that they're there and then let's jack with the curves here because I want this to be slightly darker, darker. I think we might have upped the highlight a bit much. You know what? It might be easier to just 
add a whole nother curves effect to darken things a bit. And that'll, yeah, that looks much more dramatic all of a sudden. Very nice. Now that gets very dark there for a bit, so we might have to come in here to this bit. Let's see, it gets very, very dark right here. So we might have to jack with that to sort of artificially fix that darkness because we don't ever want it to really get black. Okay, I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. It's very much different from my version in terms of color, but I'm into it. Let's just keep working here. Um, okay, good, so we put the crest and the clock in their own composition. And the reason for that is because we want to have the ability to sort of control them together. So what we'll do is we'll sort of have it scale down over time. Not much, probably about 5%. But if we play back here, it's just this. We've got some movement, which is nice. We want to keep things moving, give the illusion of like we're going through something as if, as if some sort of mission has been accomplished just by simply watching the intro. Um, I don't know if that's true. I just like things to be in motion, really. So we'll just stick with that. And okay, a couple other things we can do here. If we look around, we have a texture here, a couple of film grain textures. Um, I think this will probably be the one we want to jack with. Let's drag this right on top. And first thing we'll do, invert it. Very nice. We'll go transform for the comp width and let's grab a curves effect. Actually, let's set the blending mode to add and then we'll grab a curves effect. So my first thought would be drag this this way to get rid of a lot of the sort of data here. And then we can also maybe bring down the highlights some and that'll get rid of some of it as well. Okay, here's my thinking. Let's drag this to about right here so that we have just a little bit of grain left. And let's have this start here so we can keyframe the curves effect. And then when we get to the end of the comp, let's drag the highlight down quite a bit so that it's just barely a little bit of something. And then as the comp goes on, this film grain texture will sort of be disappearing. Um, you know what, actually we need some movement on this end as well. Okay, I think the fans are really kicking up now. Sorry about that. But as we go through the comp, the grain is hiding itself and it should sort of be, actually little elements of it should be disappearing. It should be somewhat sort of procedural. It's not really just like a opacity, like going from 100 to zero. And okay, I'm gonna stop trying to do those RAM playback because for whatever reason that is making the CPU jump way up. I mean, that might be too intense at the start, but when we get the transition stuff figured out, we're really not gonna start until about a half a second in or something. So we'll see how that works. Uh, and speaking of transitions, let's go ahead and do the transition. All right, so we're gonna do a, 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 an adjustment layer and we're gonna call this transition and that'll be that. Uh, you can also just create a new layer and hit this button right here to turn it into an adjustment layer. Um, we're gonna want an effect called, I think it's called polar coordinates. And if we turn this on, you can see what it's doing. Might be a better idea to ditch the adjustment layer and we'll just, we'll pre-compose everything. And we'll call this uh, transition comp. And then what we can do is we'll have it scale up quite a bit and then scale down at about the half a second mark or so to 100%. So if we play that back, it's a bit of a rough transition there. So what we could do is we could hit this and we'll do function F9. That'll make it sort of ease in and out of it. Should be a bit cleaner. Um, you know, maybe we could just open up the editor here and let's work on this curve a bit. Let's uh, give that a shot. Okay, that seems like a much gentler. Okay, perfect. I like that much more. All right, so we'll grab that um, polar coordinates effect and let's turn it up to anything that looks kind of interesting and warpy. Okay, that's cool. So we'll set that at the very beginning. Then when we come down here, we'll set it to zero. And then that looks very nice. Okay, and then one other thing that I ended up doing was this sort of shorter transitional clip here. I have about a two second lens flare flash type deal. Let's do uh, transform for the comp width is, we'll have it come in when it's right at its brightest. Okay, cool and we'll set the adjustment mode to add. And let's grab a tint effect. And I'm gonna tint it an adverse color, a, a complementary color. So we'll do red, really. That's what we're aiming for here. And what I might do is I might drop this into the actual composition rather than having it out here. All right, I like that. Um, again, the colors aren't exactly where I would wanna be. I mean, really that's the most difficult thing about this particular design. It's just jacking with the colors and getting them exactly where I would want them to be. I mean, I might come in here and sort of help this fade off a bit faster. And of course, 
you know, maybe you don't even need to go with the red. Maybe you could do something like a nice green to complement it a bit more, or like a turquoise or whatever. I don't know. There's a lot of options here. I'll make it slightly more pink than red, maybe. I don't know. Again, I don't want to jack with the color too much, because this... I don't want to spend an hour in this video just making minor adjustments to the color. But that's sort of the idea here. Uh, then the final sort of transitional thing that we're going to have is about two seconds before the end of the comp, we're going to cut to a red screen and do... And on that red screen, there'll just be a bit of text that will have my website address on it. So let's scale that up a bit. We'll do... Uh, Montserrat and we'll find a good thickness there and line it to the center. Scale that down quite a bit more. Line to the center. And if we hit Command Shift D, we can just cut a clip. And originally I had it just sort of pop on like that. I mean, that's a bit of a sort of abrupt zoop. And with the way that my music that I typically use works at, it's actually not a bad transition, but I thought we could do a bit better. So what we will do, we'll create a new layer and we'll make it an adjustment layer. I'm going to drop it right below the two layers that we used to create the final frames here. And at about half a second before that, what I'm going to do is I want to add a, I guess a blur effects any blur effect will do really i'll use like a gaussian blur and then we'll add that uh, polar coordinates effect and then we'll also add a curves effect what we'll do is we'll just come down the line and keyframe everything at zero to begin with and then right here the frame right before it happens let's blur it up quite a bit i'm going to drag the blur to the bottom and then let's set the polar displacement up quite a bit and then what we're also going to do is we're going to come to the red channel over here on the art on the curves and we're going to up everything quite a bit so that it really turns red and then if we sort of watch what happens here we sort of transform into that final bit again you might jack with the specific colors. You'd spend a lot of time fiddling with this if you were, or you know, at least I would if I was being very specific, because I'd want to get it looking very, very nice, but the principles are there. You know, you still get to jack around with stuff yourself if you're trying to recreate this on your own. What I want to focus on now is dropping in all of these little tiny elements that you see all over the place. Uh, so let's do that. So the main reason I want to focus on this is not because the specific elements are really all that important. They aren't, but I want to show you something cool that you can do with After Effects. So let's go back into this comp here and let's we'll create a new comp and we're going to call it Elements. And here's what I want to do. I'm going to make sure I have the viewer selected and then I'm going to go to View, New Viewer. And you can see it creates a second viewer over. And what I want to do is I want to go back to this transition comp and right up here I want to hit this lock icon. And then we'll drag in the Elements comp into here. And what we can see now is that if we go over to the Elements comp, and let's just, for example, create a text layer and we'll say, does this work? We can see how it's being affected in both levels. We can see what's going on over here on our black sort of alpha mat, and we can also see how it's being affected over here in the final render. So that is just about perfect, and it's gonna let us really line up the elements the way that we might want to. So this is not looking exactly right over here in the final product. So what we can do is go back over to the transition comp, and I put something in every corner so that, let's kill that for a second. Um, so that what we can do is sort of have it scale up, rotate, have some movement. So we'll do S, S Shift R, that'll bring up the scale and the rotation, keyframe those bad boys, and well, or maybe we'll come to the end and keyframe them. And then at the beginning, let's rotate them a bit. Not too much. But then also, we want to desaturate them a little bit, because this is a bit much to look at. So, grab a tint effect. And we want to leave some amount of color in. It's nice to have some color there with them, but we'll also maybe set the blending mode to add, and we might bring down the opacity a bit. Let's go down to about 60. Okay, that works for me. Um, let's, we could maybe even bring in a bit more of the color. Again, this is one of those things to fiddle with and get exactly how you want it. For now, I'm just gonna keep adding stuff to fill in here. I don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I would keep adding these and tweaking these and messing with the color over here specifically and messing with the color a bit more over here, but I think this is totally fine. I think I've sort of gone over the basics, the essentials of how this process worked. 
and how I set it up, and I think you, you sort of get the idea here. Um, if I ever want to come in here and swap out some of these specific elements, that's very easy to do. I can just turn one off, drop another one in. If I ever want to jack with the typefaces or the colors or the settings, something that I've done in the past is, um, <laughs> there's a cool effect here. Uh, let's create some snow. And I mean, you could do this with literally almost any logo, but you know, since I had it here and the, since the whole idea was to be modular, uh, there's an effect here called uh, CC Snow or something like that. Snowfall, there it is. Throw that over the top. And we could generate a bit of snow kind of quickly. There we go. And let's bring up the opacity a bit, make it very obviously snow. And then we could just overlay that on top. And what do you know? Now we have a Christmas logo. Of course, that's terrible snow. It's not very well organized, but you get the idea. I can come in here and sort of change up the background a bit. That's something I've done a lot for various like holidays or something like that. You know, let's say we come in here and, you know, it's it's March, so we want to throw some rainbows down or something. Who knows? There's a lot of different options with this. It's very modular, and it's very easy for me to quickly change and re-render. I, I am sort of getting the sense, because I didn't spend so much time jacking with this, this is like, you know, the art project, and this is like first draft of it, which makes sense. I mean, this is sort of first draft of it, but I uh, hope you liked this video. Uh, I don't know how relevant it'll be for a lot of people, but if you enjoyed it, that's awesome. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.